Why are humans human? Welcome to Enigma Files. When it comes to the origins of humanity, there are several theories. The alien creation theory, the biblical explanation of divine creation. We'll dive deeper into these theories in future videos. Today, however, let's explore humanity's origins through the lens of evolutionary theory and tackle the ultimate question. Why are humans human? It's common knowledge that Earth is home to over a million known species, but among them, only humans possess advanced intelligence. According to evolutionary theory, humans evolved from primates. This raises a fascinating question. If primates could evolve into humans, could other species evolve into intelligent life forms too? Could birds evolve into bird people? Could cows become cow people? Or fish turn into fish people? Is such a transformation even possible? Today, we're going to discuss this intriguing topic. Let's begin with a familiar image, one that most of you have likely seen. This iconic picture first appeared in a book in 1965. At a glance, it seems to depict the evolutionary progression of humans, but the author's intention wasn't to show a direct lineage. Instead, the image represents various human-like species that once existed on Earth. The figure on the far right is modern Homo sapiens. In total, the original illustration depicted 15 species, all reconstructed from fossil evidence. These species once roamed Earth, Yet no evolutionary link has been definitively established between them and modern humans. Except for us, all the others are extinct. Why did they go extinct? That remains a mystery. Fossil records suggest that modern humans coexisted with some of these species for a time before they disappeared. One common theory is that humans survived because we are smarter. We can make tools, wear clothes, and harness fire. While this theory makes sense on the surface, there's a major contradiction. Take the Neanderthals, for instance. They coexisted with early humans, but went extinct roughly 20,000 to 30,000 years ago. We know this because no Neanderthal fossils have been dated beyond that period. Yet, Neanderthals had a brain capacity of 1,450 cubic centimeters, compared to modern humans' 1,350 cubic centimeters. While a 100 cubic centimeters difference may not sound significant, it's worth considering that if Neanderthals were alive today, they might all be like Einstein in terms of intelligence. So, if they were indeed smarter, why did they go extinct? Some speculate that Neanderthals didn't go extinct at all. Perhaps they were more advanced than us and developed rapidly into a higher civilization, one that either left for space or retreated into the Earth's interior. What makes us human? To understand why humans became human, we must examine our defining characteristics. One, bipedalism. Humans are the only species in nature that primarily walk upright. Sure, animals like monkeys and bears can walk on two legs briefly, but they predominantly use four limbs. Why did humans develop bipedalism? The prevailing theory suggests it's because we needed to free our hands for other tasks. Over time, this led to upright walking. However, other animals, such as monkeys, occasionally use their hands, yet they never evolved into fully bipedal beings. One plausible explanation is that early humans needed to carry heavy objects. When primates had to transport weighty loads, their hands couldn't remain on the ground, which encouraged bipedalism. Light objects can be carried in the mouth or with one hand, methods monkeys often use. But why were early humans carrying such heavy loads? And what were they transporting? This ties into the alien creation theory. Could it be that humans were engineered to help extraterrestrial beings, such as the Anunnaki, transport gold or other materials? Two, rapid muscle degeneration. Another distinctive human trait is the quick degradation of our muscles. If humans evolved from primates, it took only 6 million years for our musculature to weaken to its current state. Such rapid degeneration is unheard of in the natural world. To test this, an experiment was conducted in which zoo monkeys were fed but prevented from exercising. Even with a sedentary lifestyle, their muscles didn't atrophy. This phenomenon is consistent across nature. Lions, tigers, and leopards don't need daily workouts to maintain their strength. They're naturally muscular. 
Humans, however, are different. Without regular physical activity, our muscles can deteriorate in just a few months. From birth, most animals are born strong and capable. In contrast, human babies are fragile and require extensive postnatal development. Even as adults, humans are physically weaker than most animals. We can't outrun them, overpower them, or match their natural abilities. This raises a profound question. Why is humanity so physically underwhelming compared to other species? Could it be that our weakness is, paradoxically, part of what makes us human? And what role might extraterrestrial intervention have played in shaping us into the beings we are today? The third incredible feature, humans have no fur. The fact that humans are hairless is an enigma that defies logical explanation. On Earth, among land mammals, humans are uniquely hairless. And it's not just about the absence of body hair. Humans do have hair on their heads. But consider this, human hair can grow up to several meters long if not cut. Meanwhile, animals like lions or tigers seem to have perfectly groomed fur that never requires trimming. Even our primate ancestors don't grow hair like ours. Could a chimpanzee or a gorilla grow luscious locks several meters long? Clearly not. This ability to grow head hair seems unique to humans. Why do we even have hair? Its purpose remains unclear. Moreover, humans have eyebrows and men grow beards, features that seem equally purposeless. At the beginning of this video, we mentioned that Earth was once home to many human-like species. Among them was Homo erectus, which went extinct about 70,000 years ago. The Peking man, for instance, belonged to this group. Researchers believe that Homo erectus perished during an ice age when the Earth became extremely cold, leading to their demise. Here's the paradox. If Homo erectus, with his body covered in fur, couldn't survive the ice age, why didn't modern humans, who are nearly hairless, also freeze to death? Wouldn't we expect natural selection to produce thicker fur for warmth? The fact that humans lack fur makes little sense. Furthermore, humans possess an extraordinarily efficient sweat system. Dogs, for example, can run for miles without sweating. But if a human jogs even a short distance, they'll start dripping sweat. Have you ever seen a tiger or lion sweating profusely? Of course not. The combination of hairlessness and a highly efficient sweat system suggests that humans are designed for heat dissipation. This lends credence to the theory that humans might have been engineered by extraterrestrial beings, such as the Anunnaki, to work in hot environments, perhaps mining gold in underground tunnels. These conditions, far from Earth's surface, could explain our adaptations. After all, Earth has never been exceedingly hot during the time humans evolved. On the contrary, it has experienced multiple ice ages. So, why did humans lose their fur in such a cold climate? The fourth unique trait, white scara. Another uniquely human trait is a white scara. In the animal kingdom, this feature is exceedingly rare. From a functional standpoint, the white part of the eye doesn't serve any direct purpose. Logically, if it's unnecessary, animals wouldn't have evolved it, and most don't. So why do humans have white scara? The prevailing hypothesis is that it aids communication. In the pre-language era, humans relied heavily on nonverbal cues, such as eye contact, to communicate. The white scara made it easier to determine where someone was looking, which was crucial for conveying meaning without words. For example, if someone glanced toward a danger or a target, others could follow their gaze and react accordingly. The high contrast between the white scara and the dark iris makes human expressions visible even from a distance, enhancing group coordination during activities like hunting. This raises an interesting question. Why do humans need this advanced form of communication when other animals don't? Animals manage just fine without such visual signals, relying on simpler forms of interaction. This suggests that humans were under unique evolutionary pressures requiring sophisticated, silent communication, a necessity seemingly absent in the natural world. The fifth key difference, language. Moving from physical traits to cognitive abilities, the most significant distinction between humans and animals is language. Animals don't have what we call language. While they may produce sounds or calls, 
They cannot construct grammatically complex sentences. Language allows humans to exchange intricate ideas and concepts. Animals, whether solitary or social species like ants or bees, don't exhibit this capacity. Even highly social animals communicate through simple signals. A warning cry is sufficient to alert others to danger. There's no need for complex syntax or nuanced discussions. In nature, traits evolve out of necessity. If something isn't essential, it doesn't develop. By this logic, language shouldn't exist. It's not inherently required for survival. And yet, it does, and humans have not only developed it, but refined it to extraordinary levels. This implies that, at some point in history, language became indispensable for our ancestors. Perhaps an event or situation arose where only language could ensure survival. What might that have been? Moreover, language has unique capabilities. It allows humans to lie and to describe the future. These two functions are completely unnecessary in the animal kingdom, where direct and immediate communication suffices. The emergence of language might point to a time when our ancestors needed to describe future plans or even deceive others to survive. The sixth unique human skill, recording. This might just be the fundamental distinction between humans and other animals. Humans have the ability to record events or data in various forms, through words, language, murals, and sculptures. For instance, if someone saw an alien, they might sculpt a figure of the alien, paint a mural, or share the story verbally. This verbal storytelling isn't recorded using a voice recorder, but through oral transmission. I tell you what I saw, and you tell others, and soon everyone knows. That's also a form of recording. This ability ensures that humans don't just rely on their brains to remember things. This is where we differ from animals. Animals can see things and remember them too, but only in their minds. They leave no external record. Have you ever seen a gorilla painting murals? Exactly. When a new generation of animals is born, they have no way of knowing what the previous generation experienced. Without this transmission, their civilization cannot progress. Humans, on the other hand, can pass on knowledge and experiences, allowing each new generation to quickly learn from the past and grow stronger and more capable. This ability to record and share knowledge is likely the biggest difference between humans and animals. Both language and recording are skills that stem from our brains. But what makes our brains different from those of animals? Current research suggests that the human brain is not fundamentally different from animal brains. Sure, ours might be more developed, but animals also have quite advanced brains. They're smart, quick to react, and capable of remarkable things. In fact, the human brain might not even be the most impressive in the animal kingdom. If you count the number of neurons, for instance, whales and dolphins outshine us. In terms of brain-to-body ratio, spiders win. They dedicate 80% of their body mass to their brains. No matter how you measure it, capacity, ratio, or other metrics, there's no clear, inherent advantage in the human brain. So, how did we end up dominating the planet? The difference doesn't seem significant enough to explain the vast gap we see today. Here's another surprising discovery. The human brain isn't inherently powerful at birth. For example, a newborn who isn't taught to speak will never learn to talk on their own. Such children, tragically isolated from language from birth, may learn individual words, but will never grasp grammar or complex syntax. This phenomenon highlights a critical period for language development between ages three and five. If a child doesn't encounter language during this period, they'll never fully acquire it. The same applies to other abilities, like math. For instance, the Piraha people, a remote Amazonian tribe, cannot count because their culture lacks numbers. Adults who didn't learn numbers as children are unable to grasp numerical concepts later in life. This critical period for human development underscores how extraordinary our brains are during early childhood. Cats and dogs can be trained to understand commands like sit or raise your paw but they will never comprehend grammar or syntax the way humans can. From a purely biological perspective, humans are not particularly advanced. Our physical structures, organs, senses, and endurance are mediocre at best. 
Our lungs are inferior to birds. Birds can breathe and exhale simultaneously. Reproduction is inefficient. Humans often struggle during childbirth, unlike animals that birth multiple offspring with ease. We lack strength, speed, and reflexes. Cats and dogs are at least five times faster in reaction times. Even our senses are subpar. Our hearing, sight, and smell are weak compared to many animals. Despite living on a cold planet, we're hairless and overly sensitive to ultraviolet light. Yet somehow, beneath this fragile exterior lies a remarkably powerful core. Imagine an old, broken computer fitted with a top-tier CPU and an exceptional operating system. It feels as though this system doesn't belong to the machine it's running on. If apes evolved into humans, could other animals, elephants, dolphins, or birds follow the same path? Biologically, many animals have the potential for intelligence. Elephants are incredibly smart. Dolphins exhibit self-awareness, and even crows solve complex problems. Human civilization is astonishingly recent, only about 6,500 years old. In less than 10,000 years, we built cities and cultures, a blink in geological time. Other species, having lived for millions of years, might evolve intelligence rapidly if given the right conditions. But here's the question. If human intelligence is purely a product of natural evolution, why has no other species developed comparable wisdom? The uniqueness of human intelligence suggests it may not have been a purely natural phenomenon. Consider the extinction of Neanderthals. It seems suspiciously targeted. Why did Neanderthals vanish while humans survived? Similarly, the asteroid that wiped out dinosaurs spared many other creatures. These events feel almost deliberate, as though orchestrated. If humanity is the only species on Earth with advanced intelligence, it could mean one of two things. Advanced civilizations existed before, but have either gone extinct or left Earth. In either case, one thing becomes clear. Humanity may not have been the first intelligent species, nor are we the original creators of wisdom. Instead, we might be inheritors, or even the conclusion, of an older legacy of intelligence. Could it be that humanity didn't evolve intelligence, but was gifted it? If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.